board meeting to order. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mrs. Treadway, would you please do the roll call? Kate Mayer? Here. Tim Menninger? Here. Myself? Here. Brianna Schwabenbauer? Here. Gary Dunlop? Uh, he's excused. Joe Gittins? Here. Cheryl Hancock? She is excused. Annie Jenkinski? Here. Okay, with uh, five of the seven board members present, I would declare a quorum and approval of the agenda. Um, I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. Um, I have one um, change to the agenda. Under the executive session, we will be striking the district administrator's performance evaluation discussion, but we will keep the contract non-renewal for one year teacher contracts discussion. So the agenda has been amended, or we will amend the agenda to reflect that change. So um, with that amendment in mind, are there any other changes to the agenda? Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I'll so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes, or agenda passes. All right, uh, recognition and thank you, Dr. Carlson. Well, good evening. We have two special recognitions this evening, uh, but the first one is very special. And so, Ms. Savasky, I'll call on Wendy to uh, introduce and share a little bit about our national board um, w process and then our our honoree this evening that we need we get to congratulate Wendy good evening national board board certification is an advanced teaching credential certification is achieved upon successful completion of a program designed to recognize effective and accomplished teachers who meet high standards based on what teachers should know and be able to do. National board certification is available nationwide and most teachers are from either teach from pre-k to 12. As of 2011-12 there were 936 nationally board certified teachers in the state of Wisconsin and tonight, we honor the School District of Holman's 22nd Nationally Board Certified Teacher, Mr. Tim Rannis. I mentioned we, Tim would have an opportunity to make one of the comments he wants to, and so here's the mic. Just two very brief ones. I want to uh, extend uh, thanks to this to my family. Uh, there's no way that you can go through a process like this, 200 to 400 of hours. I, I can't even, I don't even know exactly how much time that I spent into this process in the portfolios and the preparations for the examinations. I just I couldn't even count the amount of time and that was a sacrifice that was made by my family in addition to myself and the second thing I do want to say is I'm, I'm thankful and I'm, I'm very proud that I work in a school district that um, encourages and supports and recognizes those teachers that do um, continue with their professional development in different fashions so uh, thank you to to the board for their support and it's just great to work and it's a great day to be home and Viking thank you <laughs> Can I just say that I've witnessed several teachers go through this process and some crawl on the floor to school in the morning and others <laughs> weep and drive home and it is grueling and it's an incredible accomplishment. So thank you for stepping forward to do that for our district. That means a lot to us as well. Thank you again, congratulations. We do have a second recognition this evening. Uh, we want to recognize Joseph and Paula Carty for their generous 
$2,000 uh, contribution um, to the kids care. And you may recall some time ago, we had a presentation on that. And so thank you so much for them. And I am going to just call on Principal Stevens just to make a, a few additional remarks of perhaps how it's being used and designated and so on as far as fitting into that uh, initiative. <laughs> Were they able to make it tonight? Not. They are not uh, in attendance. And that was done on, you know, that, that was sent just to school just to give to kids. Wow. What kind of community we live in. Thank you. Thank you for presenting that. All right. Uh, public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five-minute time limit per person be followed. Please state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Anyone? All right. Uh, moving along, reports and discussion. Um, business services, support services report. Um, Jason Austin. <coughs> Thank you for having me tonight. I'm, first of all, I must apologize. My voice is, is going intermittently here. And so not only in an effort to save my voice, but to also save you the pain and suffering to having to listen to me tonight. I'll try to be as brief as I can, even though I have three presentations to give. So not a good night for me to be on the agenda. I'm sorry. But we'll start off tonight with the business services report. It's been a while since I presented this report. And this report, you know, is a great opportunity for me just to talk a little bit about what we're doing currently in business services. You know, in addition to, you know, the regular year, yearly activities we have, you know, payroll, accounts payable, financial reporting, budgeting, you know, benefits administration, insurance claim processing, you name it, all those things that we're constantly doing for people. We're also doing lots of special projects or extra projects right now. And I'm going to just highlight a few of those briefly here, um, one of those being the employee handbook. Uh, with the in introduction of the employee handbook in July, we've been very busy implementing changes resulting from the handbook, um, looking at internal processes, how do we administer the handbook, how do we process the payroll, um, payroll dates, frequency, timing of payments, on leave paid process, all these things changed as a result of the handbook. Changed for the better for employees, changed for the better operationally, but we have to administer those changes on the back end. So going through all those changes. Um, in addition to that, you know, the communication that's involved with that. Communicating to staff on a regular basis. These are the changes in WRS that are coming. These are the changes in Social Security um, increases that are coming. Many of the other important changes letting people know that payroll dates are changing, payroll frequency are changing. Those things are important in communicating our staff so they understand these changes are occurring. In addition to that, ongoing compliance. Compliance with the employee handbook, making sure that we're administering employee benefits correctly, payroll in a timely manner correctly, all those types of things as well. And then in addition to that, working on revisions, new language, correcting old language, clarifying things and whatnot. We're currently in the process of doing that as well. So rather busy just in that in itself. Uh, another key and important area is Skyward Financial, the web. Uh, whether most people are aware of this or not, um, Skyward, our financial 
software provider um, that provides both financial and HR um, support for us is undergoing some significant changes. Uh, so significant changes, what it's doing is it's going from a desktop model to a web-based model. And for many people, they say, well, what changes are occurring as a result of that? Everything is being transitioned to the web. They're totally going through every application, financial and HR, and now bring that out to the web, putting a new face on it, changing how we access it, changing how we process things. All those types of changes then are being administratively uh, supported on our end behind the scenes. And we need to update our processes internally to make those things happen. But it's also a very good thing. What it does is it allows us to transition to more of a, a web-based environment to process transactions on the web, to move money on the web, to process purchase order requests on the web, email procurement on the web, all these new tools that are coming out that we'll be able to introduce staff <coughs> in the near future. So things like that that we're trying to keep ahead of, but also turn around and introduce to staff and departments to help them make their lives easier as well. In addition to that, 403B, keeping the 403B plan in compliance. Remember, we're our own plan administrator. We didn't select a third party administrator like many districts did years ago. We chose to manage it in-house. With that though, we you know, have additional responsibility in making sure that we run that plan uh, per the IRS guidelines and in complete compliance. With that, um, making sure that we share the, the appropriate information with staff members, make sure we amend the plan as necessary and so on and so forth. In addition to that, the bid cycle. We've got two bids right now underway. The audit bid, which I came to you in the fall and explained to you in the fall, is, is currently coming to a close at the end of this week. Then it will be going through all the bids that we solicited and looking at which ones we will present for a recommendation in the board come February. In addition to the audit, also checking account services is up for bid. So another very big, this is even uh, a bigger, larger bid, more comprehensive, um, bigger array of services that we rely on, ACH processing, payroll processing, all those types of things that we process now through our checking account services will be up for bid. So we have up, up well, we have 13 checking accounts in the district that we all manage, uh, reconcile, keep up on top of every day. Those accounts are all going up for bid at this point in time. So hopefully introduce those bids in February, looking to make a recommendation mid to late March. And last but not least, just some miscellaneous projects that we're also working on. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the miscellaneous projects include things like the budget development events calendar, We've made lots of changes with that this year, and we've got changes coming up ahead in 2013-14. Just working on how do we implement those changes behind the scenes? How do we prepare that information to report back out to you so you guys have better information and to our leadership team as well? Um, open records requests. Those have seemed like they've come more to our attention lately, and um, those take resources away from my department as well. Smart goals. WRS prior service liability, which I reported out on recently, looking for that advance funding, paying that down. Projects like that to try to save the money district, but the district money um, ends up, you know, taking away from other responsibilities, but are important nonetheless. Any questions on what I went through rather quickly? Thank you. Thank you. That was really fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, information technology wireless infrastructure update, Jan Wee. Checking service process. There's two other items on the agenda. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I thought you were kind of combining no, it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. I thought yeah. it was remarkably fast. <laughs> so that was the support service report. Just item one. Section. Yeah, thanks, Jason. The next one would be the checking services bid process, which um, there's an issue paper in the board packet. The checking account service bid, we typically bid out on a five-year cycle. Remember last year we, I came to you and, and asked for an extension of, a, of one additional year. Uh, we currently have our banking relationship with Associated Bank. That relationship has been good. It's, uh, they've been meeting our needs. I think it's very competitive. So at that point in time, we requested an extension due to some of the other activities that we were um, taking on in the spring. At this point in time, though, we are bidding that out. We would like to s present those bids and, and send those bids out in early February with a final decision hopefully at the end of March. Uh, what we will be asking though, um, since we do typically bid this out every five years, uh, since we had that one year extension, to get us back on track, alternating this cycle against some of the other cycles that we have, we'd like to bid this out for a four year agreement. Does anybody have any questions on the checking account services bid and the process that's used? I provided additional information in there of the past bid that was bid out in 2007 for that five year period. So, so Mr. Austin, you will be coming back to the board at um, a future board meeting asking for approval of I will be presenting the final um, recommendation to the board of the, the new provider, if there is a new provider, the best bidder, if you will. And I, I would imagine that's going to be at the end of March. Okay. Last but not least, 403B plan amendment. There's also an issue paper. There's two minor amendments, the HART and the WRERA amendment that I would like to introduce to the plan and amend the plan for those two provisions. Um, those are just minor uh, language cleanup. Um, nothing too material, nothing to impact employees directly, but um, two pieces, two amendments that the uh, attorney suggested we include in the plan as well. Just for plan cleanup and compliance. And that is on tonight's consent agenda. Mm -hmm. So we are yeah, coming correct. to you and asking. So uh, now would be a good time to ask questions or of course you can do it later if you wish to. I read the Heart Act Amendment at home. That's basically for our military people. Do I have that right in protecting them if they're called away that is that is correct I mean the, the plan as we have it now allows um, a lot of flexibility in that area this is just to strengthen that um, the attorney said that you know we don't have to operate or we don't have to have that amendment but he just said it, it, it helps protect the plan and it helps protect those individuals as well yeah yeah I'm glad we're so doing it's that good then. to have that in there too mm -hmm. So just looking for the board's consent on adding these two amendments tonight. Uh, we're going to make these amendments effective um, the end of last year's plan, December 31st, is when we need to make those uh, effective. Okay. Any more questions? No? OK. That's it. You're finished now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome back. Good evening. <laughs> Can you believe it was October 22nd when I was last here to tell you about the technology update? And here I am, <laughs> two months later. <laughs> a lot of progress has been made over the last couple months. It may seem a bit slow to um, some, but it's very important that we 
do an exceptionally good job on uh, updating the infrastructure at the school district of Pullman so that we're prepared for 21st century learning. You're just a little bit closer at the mic. Thanks, Jim. Okay. <laughs> Is that better? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to remind you, back in October, I uh, brought forward uh, some information to you about the upcoming infrastructure update. And basically, our uh, project is one that will, in the first phase, address uh, pretty much a complete forklift overhaul of the network switching infrastructure at the high school and the middle school. It will address the wireless access points in addition of 54 access points in one of the buildings, 50 in the other. It will address all the network wiring, the CAT6 cabling, the controller, which is the device that manages the uh, wireless network, the software installation training, and so on. So just as a reminder, that's what this project is about. And um, back in October on the 22nd, I presented the overview to you. Like I said, that seems like a long time ago, but it really has gone fast for me. November, we spent a good part of that month uh, in planning meetings with engineers, making sure that we felt comfortable with uh, the switching infrastructure that we really were seeking and had a lot of our questions answered. December was spent uh, working on the request for proposal, which all of the board members have a copy of. And as you can see, it's a quite an extensive document. It took uh, quite a bit of intensive uh, hard work to get that into a form that was uh, one that we felt is going to do the best job for the district. And I want to thank Jay and Dr. Carlson both helped uh, work through the RFP along with Matt Kaliz, who was our network operations specialist. But we felt like we came out with a very good RFP that would get to that which we need. Um, we collaborated with experts uh, in and are working on um, you know, making sure that we have the level of knowledge and skill on the latest and, and most suitable kinds of switching infrastructure for our district. Um, we have had input from other districts. We sought out input via a listserv asking for those districts that had done major infrastructure projects to also give us uh, recommendations as to vendors that we should make sure that we uh, tap and invite uh, to quote on the RFP and, and provide us with the responses. The RFP highlights, you can see January 7th, we released our RFP out to vendors. Uh, now about two weeks ago, a little bit over two weeks ago, we conducted tours at the middle school and the high school. Uh, during the following week, we responded to all the questions that vendors had following the tours. And as of Friday, we received our proposals back from vendors. So uh, just a day ago, actually, uh, we received those proposals, a work day. Um, we are in the process right now of evaluating the proposals. I spent today with a Cisco engineer uh, analyzing the design features and helping us work through some of the, the uh, points that we really, really need to think about, and it's been an interesting day, um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, February 11th, we hope to come back to the board with a recommendation. And on the 25th, we hope to have approval to go forward. And you can see the rest. Uh, we expect <clears throat> that by l late February, or early March, we'll have our purchase orders out. And May through, or March through May, we'll be very busy switching out our switches at the high school, getting everything wired, uh, mounting access points, and uh, being, being very busy preparing for the, the next round of RFPs for the elementary. So I just want to point out a couple things. Um, this RFP is very different than many RFPs. It's not simply a matter of um, putting an RFP out with a materials list. We were really seeking input on the design proposal that would be brought forward to us. We know there are a lot of vendors that deal with certain types of equipment, and we needed to be able to filter through those proposals and weigh heavily on the design, not just on the cost piece of of the RFP. So when you take a look at the RFP itself, and I, I don't know if I really need to bring it up for people, but um, I can do that. You can see it's broken into, there's, there's three main components, the network switch infrastructure, the wireless acquisition, and then the wiring of the access points. And um, yeah, I could scan through it, and you, you 
uh, would find that there's quite a bit of detail that goes uh, on within the document itself, but one of the things I'd really like to point out is that uh, there is a vendor info information section which all of the vendors are required to answer eight probing questions about the history of their organization, the vision, the mission, their experience in working with K-12 school districts comparable to our size and the type of projects that we are uh, under, about to undergo. Uh, how they would specifically migrate uh, us uh, from our current controller device to a new one and why they pick the devices that they are picking, how, the, how they'll address post-sales support, um, uh, evidence of their capacity to do this job within a timely fashion, and their staffing qualifications. So there's, there's quite a bit of um, yeah, you know, expectations within that document. Let me go back here. Um, Experience amongst K-12 school districts is important to us because K-12 is, is not like business in many ways. So we really want to work with a vendor who's got the depth and breadth of the K-12 experience. So any questions on that part of this? Okay. Uh, as I said, there were uh, responses were received on Friday. Out of those 11 responses I received, three were strictly on the wiring acts of the access points. Uh, there was one that bid only on, or presented a response only on the network infrastructure and acquisition, and seven vendors took on all three aspects of the RFP. So we spent a lot of time today taking a look at their design proposal, because I'm going to emphasize that again and again. It's all about the design and what's the best design for our district. Um, while cost is very important, I'd point out page three of the RFP specifically says the evaluation process is not designed to simply award the contract to the lowest cost vendor. Rather, it is intended to help the school district of Holman select the right vendor with the best combination of professional attributes, experience, capacity for successful completion of the project within the time, time frame, relevant skill sets, including that of price based on the evaluation factors. I've gone through kind of a, you know, a, a lengthy process of developing a rubric on which we can quantitatively score the, the responses. But again, the design is critical. How, why did they pick certain switches? Why did they um, choose to connect them in certain ways, stacking the switches versus not stacking them? Why did they pick certain number of SFPs? which are small form factor, pluggable fiber devices. Nobody cares about that stuff, but we do. And so we, we have to probe those questions. Those are pretty important in terms of the kind of performance we're going to get on the network for, for our staff and for our students. So that's kind of the long and short of it. If you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer any of them. Wow. This is where it's kind of like listening to a foreign language and just going, uh -huh. I was just going to say I need the Rosetta Stone <laughs> for technology here. Uh, you know, I feel that way often, but I have people like Matt Kaliz, who is our network operations specialist. He gets all that. I ask a lot of questions because I'm not a network operations specialist, uh, but, you know, I know the importance of making sure that we have the proper infrastructure. That's going to set the stage for everything. Yeah, to reemphasize that, we do know from others who have gone through this uh, the importance of setting this foundation mm -hmm. before we go any further. So we want to we, we have to make sure we do this right. And um, and uh, so that's uh, it may seem uh, to some gosh, um, you know, for me at times I'm wondering, let's get going. And but there's uh, it's really important that we. We do this right, and so I think Jan and the others involved in leading this, and uh, still on a time frame that we will hopefully um, get this going, and hopefully a busy March and April, and perhaps into May, and into summer, <laughs> onto the elementary. Right. So it will be busy. But thank you for the opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Other you. Que questions? I, I guess one of the questions I I'm appreciate that you're looking at the design that fits our district that it isn't just the lowest bid but I'm guessing that if the design is the best one for our district in the long run that's the cheapest <laughs> because we're not going back and fixing and redoing because it isn't something we wanted so I don't know is, is that right I mean 
finding finding the proper choice in the beginning does that save us money in the long run it does um, I think a lot of times uh, being rather short-sighted is a situation where you may pick a lower end switching infrastructure and in five years you find that growth has accelerated so much that you're trying to support perhaps you know very high density and our switching infrastructure cannot handle and, or you may may change your phone system at the high school and other building and you want now to have voice over IP which requires more power POE network or ports so it's very important not not to I mean it's very important to find the right price the best price for the best design so yep, that makes sense thanks for all the work that you put into this You're and, welcome. and every other person that's helped you as well thanks, yeah. Jan. thank you thank you very much all right uh, next is transportation services private school new and transportation contracts I'll make a couple of comments and Mr. Clark may uh, if I miss something you'll see in the issue paper actually the issue paper does a very nice job uh, Mr. Saxton had uh, done a nice job putting that together and really again this involves our private school transportation agreement that we have and as the issue paper talks about we provide uh, transportation in, um, in the uh, morning uh, helping get students to and so on but uh, we have contracted with parents um, of transporting their child to with the private schools and this is uh, 4k and and kindergarten so we would be coming back and again this is something that um, would not be new and um, we would be coming back at the next board meeting and asking for your approval uh, mr. Clark is there anything that really to bring out and in, uh, in addition to <coughs> The only, you, you noticed in the issue paper that we to calculate the annual cost and then divide it in half, and what's with this discounting? <clears throat> Remember, these students are transported to the from if they're, if they're morning, they ride the regular bus with everybody else. There is no need for this noon transportation. If they attend their afternoon session at their school, they get a home, ride home from the district with everybody else. It's just, that's why half. They only get transported either to or from by the parent. The rest is done. Questions? Otherwise, we would be coming at the next board meeting, and this would be on the consent agenda. Okay. Thank you. Uh, WIA Boys Swimming Co-op Team Agreement Renewal. Uh, Mr. Engler. Good evening. Hello. Uh, the WIA requires cooperative teams to renew their agreement every two years. And the WIA due date for the winter sport cooperative agreement is currently coming up on April 1st. On Alaska is interested in continuing this partnership. And I'm coming to the board to ask for renewal for the 13, 14, and 14, 15 school years. And this would be at the next board meeting that you could expect this to be placed on the consent agenda. But this is another opportunity for you to ask questions. And uh, if we don't have the answer, we certainly can follow up for you. Pretty straightforward. It mm -hmm. is. Okay. Anybody? No? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mark. Um, Human Resources, Employee Handbook Language Revisions, Melissa Cates. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay, so as I've come to you in recent months um, with some handbook changes, we've found a few more things as we continue to implement um, the handbook. There's <clears throat> some things that we may have missed to put in or um, things that just don't quite make sense and we need to clarify them. So um, there's a few things that we've brought forth tonight that I'm looking for consent at at the next meeting unless we have any questions or changes to make in the language. First up will be attendance. Um, let's see. Um, so just looking at the rationale um, on all of these, I know you've seen them. I'm not going to go through and read the language. We've already approved that previously. So this language is struck below based on its inclusion in parts two and three. So 
This comes from part one for all staff. We found that it's duplicated in part two and three as well. So the um, request would be to, or our um, recommendation is to eliminate the redundancy and put it where it's um, most applicable. Do you remember the parts? <laughs> <laughs> so again, part one, how our handbook is structured. Part one applies to all employees, so it's all encompassing. Part two is, uh, we'll just call it our teacher um, section, and part three is for our hourly employees. So as Melissa said, this is in those other parts, so just trying to streamline this a little bit more. The next um, item is from part one as well. Just a second, I have them not in the right order here. This is from part one, all employees, um, the violent and threatening behavior affecting performance in the workplace. So you'll see the items in purple or pink, whatever color that is, are new. These language items have um, been taken to the employee relations team and as a result of their discussion and conversations that we have had administratively, um, there was a concern that something someone says off a work site may affect their workplace performance. So we've added some language to perhaps help take care of that or address that issue. Uh, so the rationale for this belief that behavior outside the workplace can impact an employee's ability to perform at the work site. And our previous language did not cover that. Any questions on this section? I, it, it's not really a question, but I'm just going to bring it up when I was reading it because I don't know if you want to look to change that also. Although affecting performance has been added to the title of this, mm -hmm. when I read the rest of it, like under, you know, like C, prohibited behavior, it still always mentions just violence in the workplace. So the rest of the words under it specifically talk about workplace. And so if we're including mm -hmm. Outside of workplace, you might want to look at that because it's a. I don't know if that's contradictory or not, but I okay. did. It kind of jumped out at me. All right, we'll take a look at that. Okay. Um, just from my perspective here, I don't know if we should limit it to affecting performance as well, because let's say um, something's going on with a teacher at home, but they're still able to come to school and perform well. Um, I think we should be there to. Um, make sure that we're following through um, with this policy without focusing on just how it affects their performance but how it affects them emotionally and um, physically otherwise okay All right. the next section talks about the WRS contributions this one is very simple. You'll see in the pink again. Um, when we initially approved this language, we forgot to put the statute in. So, um. and we, you know, um, <laughs> we struggle to, to, use, to use everybody's time on this. We even took this to the employee relations team, and we really don't have a set of uh, standards to what do we uh, bring back to you and or not. So, if, for right now, we're pretty much. Bringing We're changing every it, you're change, and it. Oh. you can direct us uh, if you want to come up with some other requirements or standards of what we come back to you with versus not. But again, you ultimately approve. You you did approve everything that went into that, and for that reason, where no matter how small the change, we're bringing it back to you. So, I just have to add one thing. Sometimes people say statue when they mean statute, and mm -hmm. I've seen that. Like in your top, the top huh. line there says statue, and I saw it someplace else in yeah. some of the uh, paperwork. Spell check doesn't Just a grammar yeah. Nazi. Yeah. Just, find, <laughs> just so, find so you can find statue and change it yeah. in paperwork. <clears throat> okay. The next item is under part two. This is the teacher section. We found as we went through this, um, you'll see in the rationale, it's to clarify, there's no intentional change in the language. As we work with payroll and try to make things as simplistic as possible, so anyone picking this up could 
apply the language. We found that that really didn't work with what we had before. We've taken some time now and gone through and said, okay, if someone was retiring and this is when they started working, how would you go through that based on the language in the handbook? And there was different interpretations. So to help clarify the actual intent of the language, we went through and just move some things to different spots to keep them all similar content in similar areas versus spread out randomly throughout the language. So there is no change in the intent of the language. It's to clarify the language. Any questions on this section? Okay. And the last one, again, this is very um, simple as well. We found uh, a change that we had originally made in the handbook. At the very end of the extracurricular pay schedule, uh, we changed elementary music to choir, and we found that brought some confusion. So we've, along with the ERT's recommendation, we're changing it back to music, so we're all clear on <laughs> what that position is. So. Um, no changes in who's getting what contract. It's just changing it back to help people understand and clear up what that contract is for. Any questions or other recommendations for other changes in what I've presented tonight? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, school board administrative rules for review, Dr. Carlson. You have three that are coming from, uh, it's currently on the SOC Student Achievement and Learning Committee list, and so that group is ready for those, and this is your opportunity to share your insights, your thoughts, uh, philosophical, um, and then um, I know um, our board representatives, including as mayor, as chair, would take that and um, and work with our administration then um, with the full committee and uh, incorporate your thoughts into their work. So with that, any anything to share at this time? Or I should call on uh, any of our board reps from the committee and or I see Julie and Wendy out there too, if there's anything you think specifically needs to be added. I guess just note if, if you know if you need to take a chance there are three three documents that are up here for review the um, assignment of students to classes and class loads for special ed and uh, what, what am I learning outcomes is the other one so thank you okay okay I'm just gonna trust us all right <laughs> all right uh, moving along to board member reports and discussion. Um, I will call on board members in the order of roll call and ask you to present any comments or committee reports you have. Um, eighth Mayor. Um, I'll start with the Student Achievement and Learning Committee. Um, the four-year-old um, item that was up, the four-year-old um, public preschool, we did pass that one. We are, we are moving the grade advancement policy for eighth and ninth grade as well as fourth and fifth and the acceptable use policy we want to talk about that more in february so if you could give us another month are we okay with that yeah and we're very close to everything it's just you know how time goes at the end and it seemed hurried and these are they're just marvelous meetings i love them <laughs> there's so much brought up and lots of different perspectives so if that's okay with you we need another month um, and then I did, um, thanks Christina for helping me put the, the list of, is now the time to do this for convention? Also, um, the sessions that I went to, I wanna preface this by thanking all of you for letting me go to the convention as a rookie and trusting that I didn't you know, screw it up too bad <laughs> being a new person on there, but it was a thrill. It was um, just marvelous, state of the art and looking ahead kinds of workshops that I went to. Uh, very exciting, things from legislature to technology. I was telling some of the board members before the beginning of the meeting, um, I went home or later in the evening, I had to Google some terms 
to figure out what some of those terms meant in technology. That's how, that's how cool I thought that that was. Um, the pre-delegate um, assembly discussion as well as the delegate assembly was very, very exciting. That was a piece of government that was just watching people deba debate and get red-faced and passionate about what they believed. And that was good for me because then I could listen to both sides of the story. Um, it, it, I don't need to go into those, but if you ever want to email me or, or, or tonight even if you have questions about them. The, the two on the bottom that failed just to make a note of really what happened was the 1304, which was the student academic and career plan, failed for two reasons. They felt that we don't have in place educationally yet the kind of choices in our career education for kids that are down at the fifth and sixth grade level. They felt that was too young for them to start looking at that. More people thought that, I should say. It was a very close vote. There were also many more that said, well, of course it's not too young. They can start and always change it. Um, but the second reason was funding. They felt that there were a lot of things that we were looking at in terms of resolution, but it, there was no extra money for that. And then the shortage of speech and language pathologists and other special ed services providers came down to the respect of what it meant to get a degree in those areas and to not compromise uh, services to our special our special ed kids um, I don't I I don't want to take up a lot of time tonight I took copious notes and things that we learned that I hope maybe just as the year goes on and we hit certain topics like technology that knowledge that's in my head now uh, will help us as a as a school board um, for me to bring certain topics up. Two of the big things that I, I do want to bring forward um, in terms of where we're going with our learners, I heard over and over and over again about looking at the side of the child that is what business needs, what survival skills are, and how right now we're focusing um, a lot on our students' skills, but we are not focusing on creativity and problem solving and collaborating as a team. It's individual scores. Not that those things are bad, but that we're sort of forgetting about the other things. Um, there was, it might have been Tony Wagner who said something about it, it doesn't matter just how much a student knows. What matters more is what they do with what they know and that we need to provide them opportunities to show what they do with what they know. And he said, if you don't test it, it's not taught. And so right now, all the things that are being tested, for sure, are being taught. But we need to embrace that other piece of our future citizens. And that theme was overriding in many of the things I went to. Um, lots of talk about flipped classrooms. That was very exciting to me. Um, as we enter this era of getting more technology and wireless, um, picturing classrooms across the district where homework is actually listening to the lecture of the teacher um, and, and seeing other items provided by what's online where the kid goes home and they look at what typically today goes on in the classroom. Then when they come back to the classroom, the teacher is all about working with them and they're working in collaborative teams and they're doing projects just like the real world would have them do. And that, that term flip technology really flipped me. I thought, gosh, I hope I live long enough <laughs> to see something like that. So. Um, I could go on and I'm not going to, but thank you so very much. A special thank you to Dr. Carlson. He took such good care of your rookie board member. He gave me a tour of the place and told me where to eat and where good deals were and here's what people usually do, but you do what you want to do. He just always made sure that I, that I felt comfortable, so I was very appreciative of that. So thank you also to the citizens of Holman because you're the ones who pay for that in terms of, of, of your board members and what what kind of knowledge we put in our heads. That's it. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Uh, Tim Medeker? I had a foul with that. <laughs> um, you want my notes? I have some here, too. <laughs> uh, 
Just just a few comments tonight. First, again, c congratulate uh, National Board Certification, uh, Tim Rannis. Uh, what a great accomplishment and contribution to Holman School Districts. And certainly he mentioned it, but his family as well. And I believe they were here earlier as well tonight. So uh, just a great, great for Holman Schools. Uh, last week had a meeting of the co-curricular committee. We don't meet very often, but uh, had a meeting last week. And really just want to get up on everybody's radar that uh, we spend some time talking funding again. And uh, the, that budget as a percent of total budget continues to decline. Transportation costs continue to go up and participation continues to be strong. Not a good mix. And uh, that uh, uh, committee continues to meet, but just trying to put it out there on everybody's radar that I don't think it'll be long before we'll be hearing about the challenges coming from that area as well. And, uh, as a board member there, I know that I was getting some questions on possible solutions already, and it's like, oh boy. Um, so just putting that out there on, on people's radars. Uh, buildings and grounds met earlier tonight, and I'm going to defer any comments on that to the committee chair. Um, and then last, I've had an opportunity to get in the gym a few times, and uh, you know we're almost to February tournament season uh, coming into play. So just encouraged everybody to get out there and uh, uh, support your home and schools. All right. Thank you, Mr. Renninger. Um, Kari Treadway. Yes, uh, congratulations as well to uh, Mr. Rannis and then also the, the women or young girls, I should say, that um, raise so much money and are helping those in need in the hospitals and working in a medical facility. I truly understand um, and I know that those children appreciate that. So congratulations. Um, Mr. Menninger, just to follow up on his comment on the unfunding needs and the Building and Grounds Committee has been working hard on unfunded needs in the maintenance and facilities area. We have finished, or working on finishing a matrix and studying those, and hope to present that to the board with some solutions for those unfunded needs, probably by June. So that's kind of our timeline, so more to come. Okay, thank you. Uh, Brianna Schwabenbauer. Um, well, first I would like to start out just by listening to you all speak. Um, thank you for your involvement in our community and our schools. And I know I've said that before, but it really is inspiring to sit here and listen to um, all the work that you're doing um, with the co-curricular committee buildings and grounds, um, even just going to the WASPI conference. That's really just a great thing to see. Um, second of all, I'd like to inform you that the Young Women's Empowerment Group that I'm a part of is hosting a um, healthy living uh, event this Saturday um, at the high school from 3 to 6 and we're having Jennifer Livingston coming coming in and speak and we're doing different activities with women and talking about positive body image. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about just briefly was mentioning um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, I would like to see from my experiences in the past uh, I would like to see in the future that we would put more emphasis on that within our schools through maybe a celebration or an assembly of some sort. Um, I know other schools in the area take off, but that's not always an option for some schools. And sometimes the best option too, and I talked to Dr. Carlson about this, is educating students during the school day about Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And I think that would be an approach that we should uh, work on taking, um, focus on taking. And I know some <coughs> classes do do things, but um, just as a district and each individual school focusing on a different aspect of celebrating it. Um, and then I would also like to congratulate Mr. Rannis on his um, national board certification. I know that's not easy to get, <laughs> so it's pretty um, great that what, what he did and doing that on his own time too. Um, again, thank you for all the work that you guys do. Thank you. Um, Joe Gittins? I have no comments. Okay. Um, and I just would like to follow up and just also congratulate um, Mr. Reynas on his National Board certification. Quite an accomplishment, and the number of teachers in Holman who are nationally board certified just keeps growing, and it's always um, astounding because, like Kate said, um, it's not an easy task and it seems like it we don't realize I'm I'm not nationally board certified I've only spoken to people who are and just heard the legends of how they get there and I it's unbelievable 
that they lived through it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really am so proud. Yeah, and to have that many people in our district who have that certification is amazing to me. Um, I also just really wanted to thank um, Joseph and Paula. Is it Cardi? Is that their last name? What a great thing to do! And everybody who donated to those um, to the Kids Care um, campaign and those kids who are doing such great things for children who are in that um, position, who are hospitalized and in, and in need of some cheering up. But for a couple to, to donate like that, just that's just kind of a act of kindness, and it. I don't know, I'm, I, we kind of get used to that in Holman because it seems to happen. Um, I wouldn't say too frequently, but frequently enough that we just, I don't know, it's just kind of cool. I'm just, I'm really proud that we have that in our community. So I wanted to thank that couple. And um, I guess I would piggyback a little bit on what Brianna said. Um, I was, when I went to Washington, D.C. last weekend, and on Sunday, the day before Martin Luther King Day, I was at the Martin Luther King Memorial, and I was talking to some people and told them that, you know, I mentioned that um, in Wisconsin that some of the districts had school the next day, and they couldn't believe it. So I guess I, I see your point, though. It would kind of be neat if, if districts did have school on Martin Luther King Day, that they spend a good chunk of that time learning about the things that Dr. King did. And... Um, maybe um, re not reenacting some of those things, but learning to live some of those things out in their own school communities because, man, the overwhelming the good that has been left in our world by that human being. So, um, and yeah, you had a good point. If we're gonna be in school, maybe we could bring a little bit of that spirit into our schools on that day, so. Um, that is all I have, and I will keep it moving along for Tim Mettinger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see, we have given our board reinforcements and committee reports. We've received correspondence, and our next for our board meeting schedule, let's see, um, February 11th, February 25th, March 11th, and March 25th, we have board meetings. We've also received committee reports from um, the Buildings and Grounds Committee, Personnel and Governance Committee, Finance Committee, and Student Achievement and Learning Committee. And um, I will then move along to the District Administrator's report, Dr. Carlson. Thank you. In addition to the printed uh, report you have, which again summarizes the status reports over the past month, as well as uh, the happening reports. Again, always really encourage you. It's an excellent way uh, to keep up with so much of what is happening in our different buildings and departments. Um, you also have the police liaison report. I should share with you that Officer Hickey at the, um, in our district is also working on perhaps trying to provide you with a little bit more of a narrative uh, a report of a little bit better description and so you can uh, I've been working with him on that so you can hopefully look forward to uh, that which hopefully will um, not only uh, make you aware but the public of, of some of the very important work not only making sure that safe and secure and so on but some of the education and um, some of uh, that relationship building that is so important and so um, working with Officer Hickey on that but I do have a couple um, additional things uh, if you go back to the calendar uh, just so you know and I don't know um, uh, if we have a set date but I know we are working on a candidate forum in March I think we've uh, working with the candidates and 18th or 19th likely the 18th more than likely the 18th so we will follow up tonight with an official get it out there and and one more time just to double check with everybody so um, tentatively you can be looking ahead to that um, tonight in the consent agenda you have 11.8 um, asking you to approve contract renewals for administrators and supervisors sometimes in past years you haven't necessarily had an item like this because it's just more or less has been deferred 
as a result of a statute if and that would just continue then those contracts for the same period of time typically two years bringing forward uh, part of the consent agenda this evening because we um, also in the past it's been uh, routine that um, we have taken administrators and or supervisors that have been hired on that off year uh, and bring them on board with the rest of the larger group. We have three people, uh, Mr. Inglerth, who was hired last summer, and so um, he would be on that off cycle compared to the rest of the group, who's that larger group, their contracts are ending this June 30th whereas Mr. Inglers would be ending the following June 30th. So this would be an attempt to put him on par with the rest of the group. We've listed the rest of the group as well that would be effective this July 1, 2013 through June 30th, 2015. Also, uh, Ms. Linquist and Mr. Weber at the high school, again, you recall that they while they perhaps weren't new, they assumed different, technically different positions, and so they are issued uh, new contracts. And this would be an effort to get them on par with the rest of the group as well. So you have that. Um, are asking you tonight, as part of the consent agenda, for your approval of that. Um, also, part of the consent agenda, we did follow up. You may recall at the last board meeting we had um, on the open enrollment um, and I we discovered you did not have that in your packet you have the issue paper but you had asked us to go to go back and make some corrections some adjustments and Ms. Krakow is bringing those up so I want to make sure that along with that issue paper tonight I'm going to give you a, uh, a chance to quick look this was those uh, the job that we have to do of looking anticipating the projected enrollment and space that we think would be available and you know from last time I said you know what we're open we're open for business and so what we've done is we really have left it open for um, the middle school the middle school is really the issue last time if you recall we had put some zeros in there and but we weren't real consistent with our message we said you know we're going to still uh, consider requests from non-resident families for middle school you also see now an open space for grade five i can tell you if you look back to the last board meeting there was a um, i believe a one in that space and i think that would draw some confusion and concern as well i i really am not prepared to recommend to you that we uh, send the message out there that we're restricting uh, enrollment at the grade five level to one. So this is where we're at. Um, again, as I also mentioned last time, we uh, the middle school is an area, though, that um, as we continue down, I know I had a chance to follow up with Mr. Vogler. Um, as we continue to move forward, uh, we're going to have to be more and more strategic on how we plan for enrollment at the middle school, uh, given our space needs and so on, you know, as we go down the road. So, uh, but for right now, that's, I think we've made, uh, hopefully we've made the adjustments based on your feedback last time. And this is part of that consent agenda this evening. Uh, be happy to take any questions or comments you have related to that. And I'll give you some time to look. Uh, also, um, in your board folder tonight, you have a response. I think it was back at a December meeting. Um, there was a request for class size averages from at the high school. And so you have that document. I hope that's in your folder. And so that's just a follow-up to a past request. Also, um, as Ms. Mr. Austin alluded to in his presentation, we continue to have received some open record requests, and we try to, as those are prepared and sent out, we try to provide, make sure we're providing that for you. And so I think we may even have some of that included in your folder tonight uh, as well. Um, I think those were the additional comments I wanted to make, other than thank you, Ms. Mayor, for 
uh, a great trip and really value the time of um, you know spending together and really learning more uh, from you about uh, again the, those passionate interests and really ultimately uh, your willingness to serve and so I appreciate uh, you attending and uh, for the board allowing that as well with that questions I do have one quick comment with the, I don't have it in front of me, of, of course, but it was the sheet that you handed out with the class size projections or averages. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to clarify, are we, I had someone mention to me that we're 0.5 short on science staff. So even though we see those numbers and the science numbers may uh, reflect that class size averages are within district guidelines teachers there's several teachers who are still working full days who are working four periods a day versus okay. what Brianna what you're alluding to I want to make sure that people are clear I don't believe and Mr. Bear uh, became ill today so he's not here um, and I will follow up I don't believe our staffing is short I do believe we have overloads and I think what you're referring to are overloads. In other words, teachers are, so just so you know, we have, we have staffed, in other words, you have allowed and approved the giving of overloads. Um, so that does not impact that class size because we are still offering those sections, okay? But to your point, um, I don't know, I, I, I can't confirm yeah. how many overloads and what that equals as far as to a, a full-time position but yes um, that was part of the staffing plan for this year and I know that we will as we do every year when we start to review the staffing plan we review that closely so I think thank you I but I think that that's um, uh, we do have overloads in the in the science area and perhaps other areas as well Nope, that's good. I, uh, I just think that would be something that the next budget we should look at. And um, from my views, I do not think that we should have staffing overloads. Um, so yeah, that should I, be something we sure. should consider. Yep. But. Thanks. Other questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, We'll move on to the consent agenda item list. Are there any consent agenda items that anyone would like considered separately? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, all those in favor of the motion and the second to approve the consent agenda items as presented? Please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, no. Motion passes. Consent agenda items pass. All right. Um, item 12, executive session. Mrs. Treadway. I move that we enter Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin statute 19.851C for the purpose of reviewing contract non-renewals um, for one-year teacher contracts. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, would you please do the roll call vote? 